All right, uh, video five. This is insurance. Whew. Uh, what I will tell you is that whether you own or rent, you need insurance coverage. Most insurance companies have a rental uh, insurance. You need it. Uh, go ahead and, and purchase it. I know it's tough to think about spending that money, but it's even more tough when you when disaster strikes without warning and you have no money to uh, help yourself. So please, I encourage you to get that insurance and pay for it. Another thing that's important to know is that when I, um, every six months or every year, every year uh, for my insurance company, I get a small packet in the mail of paperwork that's my insurance renewal. And I presented that to my restoration company thinking that was my policy when they asked for it. And, and it's actually not. My policy is here. I've got it in a big thing. It runs about... 55 pages. There's about 55 pages in my insurance policy. Um, the only, the things I get every year at renewal are just small update packets. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the full policy in hand and that you know what it says. And that is a good, a good time to do that is when you're not in an emergency. So go ahead and request your full policy from your insurance company and have that set to the side and study it, highlight it, underline it, figure out what it says and what it means. That's super important. A mistake I made was I handed my entire policy over to the restoration company. Uh, so what I want you to do is keep that private. This policy is between you and your insurance company. I do feel like I maxed out my policy because they knew what my policy was and how much it would cover. And it, I don't I don't know that for sure. I just know that I shouldn't have done that. I did that in ignorance. It's just here, here's my policy and here's what it covers and they ran with it. Um, so please keep that in mind. I would just keep that private. They have no reason to ask you for your insurance policy. They can just work with what they've got uh, and what they're given and what they're told versus looking at the amounts that are available and saying, ah, you know, we can, we can really max this out here. So uh, please keep that private. Another mistake I made was that I was encouraged that uh, my insurance company was probably going to give me a hard time about this damage and I need to hire a public adjuster. Now, I loved my public adjuster. Um, what a public adjuster is, is someone that fights for you against your insurance company. Uh, so if there's any doubt that you may be to blame or any doubt that insurance has given you a hard time or not going to cover, then I say go for a public adjuster or hire one. They will get a percentage of the money that you get for sure. Um, in my case, my insurance company did not give me a hard time. And I ended up paying my public adjuster $5,000 and that was a settlement. He, he legally could have taken me for more than that but I ended up paying him $5,000 for nothing. He did not have to fight my insurance company. He gave me a little advice about a uh, damage uh, and he, he pushed my contractors a little bit, but other than that, he, he didn't, I didn't need his services. And so on top of the 15,000 I wasted on the bedrooms, although they're nice and we're grateful, uh, the 5,000 is another portion of money that I should not have spent out. I would wait. I would wait and see what your insurance company is willing to do. And don't agree to anything. Don't agree to any taking any money or finalizing things. If they're offering you far less than what you need and you feel like your policy entitles you to, then hire a public adjuster. Another thing a public adjuster is good at is reading the legal the legal language. They know these policies inside and out, and they sort of know what they say. And they have these softwares that search words, like mine was heavily searching mold and trying to figure out the best way to do it. So I just, I just be careful. Don't let a restoration company scare you into believing that you need to hire a connection of theirs, a public adjuster, and pay him money when you might not. Your policy might come through for you. So I just say a little warning on that. Um, we did uh, my damage. We ended up removing all the damage. Um, and then for structural safety, they reframed the portion that they had to remove um, due to the water damage. And then my insurance agent came out and took pictures and assessed everything. Uh, we were having conversations about what did have to happen, what didn't have to happen. Um, and he was very cordial. 
one of the reasons why I got all of my electrical upgraded, not just the damaged area, was because it was out of code. So that was good. That, that meant that I got my house completely rewired and paid for by the insurance company. So keep that in mind. If you've got some things that are out of code, uh, fix them if you can. Uh, but if not, think about that when you have some damage. Here's the one key to remember about insurance coverage. If they pay to take it out, they have to pay to put it back in. All right. So keep your records. There was a couple of things and I went item by item. This is the, oh, sorry. This is one of the pack. This is the rebuild packet for my house that the restoration company did um, and submitted to insurance. And then they look at it and they say, oh, we'll pay this for this, but not this for this. And, and this is what I got back. And I mean, I, I wish I could show you, hang on. I, um, it's by room, it's by item. And you can see I've highlighted and outline things that I wasn't going to do. I mean, this is so crucial uh, to keep up with and to keep it. You know what? You paid to take it out. You're going to pay to put it back in. Um, pretty crucial. So that's insurance coverage. I'm available for more questions. I learned so much, uh, but hope that helps a little bit. It helps helps you speak the language and sort of know what to expect. Um, and then my company deposited the money. Now here's the, the last thing I will say. If you have a mortgage, don't expect that check to come to you because it will not. If you have a mortgage, it goes to your mortgage holder. So my all of my insurance money for my house went to State Employees Credit Union and it was held in escrow and I had to submit both the bills and the proof that the work was completed in order for a check to be cut to pay for that. So I had to do it in stages. Um, and when, and their policy is that when they cut the check, they write it to me and they wrote it to the company that did the work, like Humphreys. Um, and so I would have to endorse the check and then get it to Humphreys. Um, and that was their policy. My endorsement of the check meant that the work was completed. And that was their way of making sure that I was doing with that money. I wasn't going on a vacation to Disney. I was fixing my house. And since they own my house, technically, I understand it. It was annoying, but I understand it. So if you can pay for your house, pay for your house. Don't let anybody else have that kind of control.